What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV, all right? So before I get into this video, um, let me say that this isn't everybody, okay? This isn't every uh, sports uh, media personality. I'm not seeing everybody doing this, but I'm seeing enough people do this to warrant a video being made by me to counter this. Now, uh, there were two pivotal Game 7s over the past uh, week, uh, last couple days, actually, between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Nets and the Sixers and the Hawks. And, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Nets, shocking almost everybody. And the Hawks defeated the 76ers, shocking some people, uh, but not others. Now, what I've noticed is a couple of things. I've noticed that when it comes to the Milwaukee Bucks beating the Nets, for the most part, what I'm seeing is people trying to analyze why the Nets lost, right? They're analyzing why the Nets lost rather than congratulating the Bucks on their victory. As a matter of fact, Fox Sports won the other day, yesterday. I actually spent a lot of their times trying to ridicule Giannis for, uh, I think it was in the regulation, when the Nets, I mean, the Bucks could have won the game, but Giannis threw up a shot to hit the side of the backboard. They were making fun of that, right? Playing into the fact that Giannis doesn't have any skills and he can't shoot. However, if I'm not mistaken, Kevin Durant shot an air ball at the end of the game. Now, of course, we all knew that he did it. He did that primarily because he was gassed. But could it also be possible that Giannis put up such a bad shot because he was tired as well? But, you know, it is what it is. And it just goes into what I, what the problem I'm seeing here. Yes, if the, if the Nets were full throttle at peak capacity and very little injury, I find it hard for the Milwaukee Bucks to have won that series without Middleton and Drew Holiday playing at a high level. If it was the way it was, I don't, it's hard for me to see Milwaukee winning that series, okay? That's true. But there's a lot of series in the history of the NBA where if the team was at full capacity, you know, things would have went different. Just a couple of years ago. Now, I'm not saying Toronto didn't have injuries, but I think most people feel like if Golden State uh, was healthy with Kevin Durant and Clay, and Clay Thompson later on, they probably would have won that series in three people. 2016 is a, year, a couple years before that. If it wasn't for the injuries to Andrew Bogart later down the stretch and Game 5, Draymond Green. And yes, we do call Draymond Green a bum, a uh, lot of us in the LDBC, but you have to admit that when you look back on things, that was the high point of Draymond Green's, of Draymond Green's career. That was the best basketball he played uh, pretty much at that, that season. That was the best basketball he ever played. So, you know, things could have been different. I think almost everyone thinks that if Kyrie Irving was available for all of 2015 and if Kevin Love played, that the Cleveland Cavaliers probably would have beaten the Warriors. There's a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda, and all that. But if you're talking about firepower, if that's the argument, most people think that, you know. You can make the argument in 1991 when the Chicago Bulls won the championship that they benefited from a lot of injuries. The Detroit Pistons and the Boston Celtics. At one point, the Boston Celtics had the best record in the NBA at 29-5 and five before Larry Bird, uh, you know, was hurt and had other injuries. They finished, I think, 56-26, and 26, right? Um, I think... Isaiah only played 48 of 82 games that year after having surgery on his wrist, you know. So if they weren't hurt, 
maybe things will be a little different. You don't know that, but it just it is what it is. 89 finals. Magic goes down after a couple of games. Robert Scott got hurt before that. Before the finals, <clears throat> the Lakers were 11-0 in the playoffs. Had they been full capacity, maybe uh, the Pistons don't win the title in 89. Maybe. So you can go there. You can do this for whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do find it hypocritical that Stephen A. Smith, and I saw the footage, right, said before this series, I think he said it maybe in the regular season when they were at full capacity for a while. He said that Kevin Durant was so good that he didn't need both James Harden and Kyrie Irving. Because he could carry the team by himself. Then you see on his stinky little top five list yesterday that the reason why they lost is because they didn't have Kyrie Irving. But you said that this team was so great, that Kevin Durant was so great, that he didn't need both of them. It was just, quote unquote, insurance. Right? A couple of days ago, Um, they applauded Kevin Durant for his performance in the finals. Two 40-point performances. Nobody congratulated Giannis really on his 40 and 13. Not really. They act like it didn't happen. They act like he didn't put up 40 points and grab 13 rebounds in game seven. It it, 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 you know, it really boggles my mind with this, right? Yet, <clears throat> in the series against the Hawks and the Sixers, even though Trey Young, for the most part, shot horrible throughout that series because of the defense of Ben Simmons, and I will give him that, he's a hell of a defensive uh, matchup against a guy as small as Trey Young. But they gave Trey Young and the Hawks so much credit for their series win over the Sixers, but none to the Bucks. even though if you were to ask people going into both series, which would have been a bigger upset, the Bucks beating the Nets or the Hawks beating the Sixers? Most people would say, yeah, it would still be an upset for the Sixers to, to, uh, to lose to the Hawks, but the Bucks beating the Nets, almost nobody in the world Except for 7A Sports TV, and to a lesser extent myself, because I even had my doubts. But nobody really thought that the Bucks could beat them, right? The hypocrisy of the media. So th this is the point, another the point I want, the last point I want to make. Giannis Antetokounmpo and Ben Simmons have a lot of similarities. They're both uh, athletic. They're both big. Giannis is a little bit, he's the naturally bigger man, of course. But they're both praised for their size, speed, and athleticism. And they're both, you know, known for not being uh, prodigious and proficient with, quote-unquote, skills or... or Offensive ability. I'll put it like that. Shooting ability. But what, for the life of me, I don't understand is how one of them who is trying to be better, one of them who is trying to be great, one of them who does seem like he cares, one of them who isn't being babied and coddled, is ridiculed because he stows up air balls and he, you know, he doesn't, I always make his free throws and all this. I remember Kobe being Bryant. I think it was his first year in the NBA. And they were playing the Utah Jazz. I think it's a series that they lost in the fire. And Kobe Bryant, I still remember it. Everybody, you know, I was in high school at the time, right? And everybody, I mean, we had the lunch table. Everybody was ridiculing Kobe for throwing up three straight air balls. 
But the fact that he was trying, despite failure, spoke magnitude to what was inside of him, the determination. The fact that Giannis continued, even though people laugh and make jokes about how he can't do this and he can't do that, but he tries, okay? He is determined to be better. And the only goddamn way you're going to be better is you're going to have to fail first. And fail he did. And no, he's not a good three-point shooter, but he continues to try to be better because the only way you're going to get better is to shoot and to keep continue to shoot and continue to practice. And hopefully the years of practice will begin to show in his game as far as shooting ability on the floor. Because I already see a lot of improvement. You know, the casuals don't see it because all they do is look at, they look, they look at uh, 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 edited uh, highlight reels made to make him look bad. But I see improvement in his game. Contrast that with Ben Simmons. Who reports came out from an anonymous source that he doesn't care, he doesn't try, and that he's babied by everybody, the organization and his family. The only thing he cares about is sticking his dick in sluts. Straight up. This goes all the way back to when he was in college. He doesn't even try. But yet, you know what I saw yesterday and I'm seeing it today more? <clears throat> people trying to be his psychologists. You know, they're giving him the, the mass murder, murderer, uh, empathy uh, uh, treatment. Well, you look, you know, the guy was having a bad day. Well, look, man, he's having a bad shooting slump. So he's just lost his confidence. We just got to get him back his confidence. You know, um, Doc Rivers shouldn't have said what he said. No. You don't throw a player on the bus like that. You don't do it. You don't throw a player on the bus. You know, these same motherfuckers, well, some of these same motherfuckers years ago, defended Bobby Knight when he attacked the player. You know? I remember reading, not saying it's right, but I remember reading about General Patton. It was toward the end of the war. And General Patton had seen so many of his soldiers killed and maimed and injured, screwed up, you know, disfigured, wounded. And he was visiting the uh, one of the units where, the, the, you know, a lot of his soldiers were injured. Some of them were in comas. And he saw one who was suffering from what they called back then shell shock syndrome, which is mental breakdown from being through the stress of the, on the front line, you know, just going through war. You know, then they call it battle fatigue. Uh, now it's probably something akin to post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder, right? So Patton saw that this soldier, and he couldn't quite understand why he was there. And the soldier began crying and saying he can't take it anymore. And Patton slapped him, right? He got reprimanded by Eisenhower, who was the Supreme Allied Commander. Then got reprimanded by the president at the time, who I think was Truman. I think Truman had succeeded Roosevelt by that time. And um, caused a big, big problem, big problem. He had to apologize to the soldier. But the thing is, in Patton's mind, you, have to, you can't, might not agree with his actions, but in his mind, the soldiers that were laying around him all had the same fear of dying. Now, I'm not trying to equate a war with forts. I'm just putting out there an example. People like to do this. All these guys got over that fear. And even though they had been injured in battle, they got over that fear 
and they contributed to the larger cause. What Patton couldn't understand is somebody who wasn't even willing to go out there and try and overcome their fear. And, uh, you know, in this situation, there's too much babying of players today. I, you know, uh, didn't get paid 30 something million dollars to go work, you know, sometimes 16 hours a day. Didn't matter what my injuries were. I could have plantar fasciitis. I have two damaged Achilles tendons. I've had a hyperextended knee. I've had uh, torn ligaments in my back. You know what I'm saying? I've had a malady of conditions where, you know, they didn't want to hear me not come to, you know, make up an excuse for I can't come to work. Bills have to be paid. So when I was in the workforce, I had to go out there and, and perform and work, right? And I'm talking manual labor, backbreaking shit at times. Right. So I'm sorry if I don't really feel sorry for athletes who make tens of millions of dollars a year. I understand what the, the work they put in. I understand how hard they work. Um, but a guy like this who's not even trying and people want to make excuses for Ben Simmons. No. No, I'm not going to do that. I have my I have my theories as to why people are making excuses for him. And that's something I would say on the Patreon. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, it is what it is. Um, but no, he doesn't deserve to have all these excuses. He's the reason why the Sixers lost. Period. Doc Rivers already tried to take the, the the fall for his team with the Clippers, and he got betrayed by his teammates. I mean, excuse me, his team. Tyron Lue probably was campaigning behind the scenes surreptitiously to take Doc Rivers' job. It succeeded. So I'll tell you, and, and, you know, and, and Doc Rivers isn't throwing him under the bus. Ben Simmons, he's being honest. With the way he played, he's not certain if he's at a championship level. That's the truth. He's supposed to lie about it. He didn't say no, but he said, you know, he wasn't, he can't answer that right now. But Ben Simmons gets all of his excuses, and the guy who is trying still gets ridiculed by fans, and and that he's a, he he can't play and he can't do this. Yeah, a guy that averages thirty two points and thirteen rebounds in an in a NBA playoff series against the Brooklyn Nets, he can't play basketball. Some people are so fucking stupid. It's it's actually it's mind numbing, you know. But uh, tell me what you guys think. 